Amen. So uh, if you have your seat belts ready, just buckle them up. Let's go to China. In uh, the same city where Brother Yun was uh, uh, in the prison, 1997, when God supernaturally appeared upon that top security prison and opened the doors and he walked out from that prison. In that same city, a few years earlier, happened this. The party secretary of that city, he became very sick. He did not admit that to himself, but his wife, who was also working as a, in, at the party office, uh, she saw that my husband is really, really getting sick. And uh, uh, she, she got him to go to the people's hospital, and he got the best doctors to exam. And they, uh, they discovered that when they uh, get him to the examination room, that we have to... Uh, open his chest and, and everything. And they looked inside and they did not look like what they saw. They just zip it up again and they said, you are going to die. You have so much cancer in the hole. All your inside is packed with cancer. You only got few weeks to live. And the whole world of this party secretary, Chang, 50 years old, com- collapsed totally. He could not, uh, he, his strength was waiting away and he was getting more and more sick. And finally, he was not able to be at home anymore. He was brought to the hospital and, and he, was, uh, he was checked in and ended up in, the, uh, in ER. And they were started to try to sustain his life as his body was fighting against the cancer in his body. And he was losing the battle every day. He was vomiting blood in buckets, and, and he was just at the last stage of the cancer. His wife became very, very worried about that, very depressed, and she was looking everywhere. Is there any help? Has every, ever, anyone ever heard about someone who can help somebody who has this kind of cancer? Is there any help? She was asking everywhere, and all the answers were, saying, no, there's no cure. If you got this cancer, you only can count down your days and you're going to die. But one day, when she was at the party office, the local chief of police came there, and he had heard this woman asking everybody, do you know of any miracles? Have you ever uh, uh, heard anyone who has witnessed a miracle? And this police chief of police, he took her aside and said, now what I'm telling you, you, you cannot tell anyone here at the party office that I have told you this. But he said, I have heard that if you get one of those underground secret disciples of Jesus to pray for you, anything can happen. <laughs> but remember... Don't tell anybody that I have told you that. And she asked, but how do I find these uh, underground secret followers of Jesus? And he said, oh, that's my biggest problem, because I don't know where they are. <laughs> we are chasing them all the time, but we, they, just, uh, they just disappear. They come and go. And we only see the result of what they have been doing. But we never get these cool prints, get hold of them. So she decided from next morning, she put on her party uniform and a military-like hat she had on and all these stars on the shoulders. And she started to walk on the main street of that, uh, that city. And she was stopping every person and she was asking one question, are you a secret follower of Jesus? And you know, if you ask a question, you are a party official of the Communist Party, and you ask, the answer is 100 out of 100, I don't understand what you are talking about. (laughs) I'm sure she met many Christians, because in that city, more than 15% of the population are already followers of Jesus. But nobody dare to answer. But until... She met a young man, a very good friend of Brother Yun, 
a very close friend to myself. And this young evangelist was very busy running to some meetings. And this woman stopped him and asked the same question. Are you a secret follower of Jesus? And he said, no, I'm not the secret follower. I'm a disciple of Jesus. What is your business? And she, it was like heaven exploded. So, so, you are the kind that if you come and you pray for my husband, he will be healed. And he said, I cannot heal your husband, but my Jesus can. So, and then she said, my husband is die is in the hospital in the ER and uh, and and uh, would you mind to go with me and 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 lay your hands you have heard how it has to be happened you have to lay your hands so uh, no di long distance missiles uh, sending just go there and lay your hands upon the sick and uh, so she said can you do and i said i'm really sorry i have five meetings to now, today uh, in a row i cannot really send a word that i'm not coming but tomorrow morning can you tell them at the hospital that nine o'clock i will come and they will open the doors and they allow me and they give me access to your husband and she was so happy and 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 she went immediately called to the hospital tomorrow a man with this name will come and you have to give full access to him uh, to, to go to my husband, and he has a very important business to do. Then in the afternoon, the doctors from the hospital, they called that kind of phone call you never want to receive. And they said to this woman, Kamrat, we have not good news. Your husband, right now, 10 minutes ago, she, he passed away. And she had a little problem she started to think, now he's dead, but the guy is going to go there tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. What, what, what would I do? And then she thought, if you are almost dead or dead, the difference is not really that big. <laughs> I can see some of you don't believe this, <laughs> but this is true. So she didn't call the evangelist. She just uh, arranged it. So next morning, when our friend arrived to the hospital, 9 o'clock in the morning, and he went to the reception, and it was, I'm looking for party secretary, Zhang. And the people, they pointed downstairs. He is down there. He's in the morgue. And they were just shaking head. What in the world is this young man doing in the morgue? So they led him down there, and they pull out from the refrigerator a stretcher. They removed the white linen, and they, uh, there was a name tag, Party Secretary Chang. And our friend, yeah, he, uh, he started to pray. He started to worship Jesus. A good 15, 20 minutes, he was dancing around the stretcher with the dead party secretary. And after 20 minutes, he just prayed a very simple prayer. Thank you, Jesus, that you are resurrection and life. Thank you for what you are going to do in this hospital through your almighty power. Amen. What happened? Nothing. He said to the two people working at the morgue, you can put him back again into the refrigerator. I will come back tomorrow, 9 o'clock again. And they did. Next morning when he came back to the hospital, there were more than two people at the morgue because the two had been rumoring about there was a strange young man who came and there was some strange presence uh, in the morgue. And, and now he said he will come back. And he's praying for that dead party secretary. And... Uh, he did the same thing, worshiping Jesus. And by the way, your worship here is so close to heavenly worship that you should really get it out to the streets so people would see the worship of God. 
Because it's actually when we are truly worshiping God, the presence of God's kingdom is so close. It's, you can touch, you can hold it. And I don't think it ever was intended to happen inside the walls of a church to get it out. So, uh, but that was a sideline. Sorry about that. I don't know how many enemies I got by that. But I can carry the load. So, uh, and he, he prayed again the same prayer. And then he stopped. He said, Party Secretary Chang, I know that you hear every word I have been praying now. But I can understand that none of these people who are witnessing here, they don't believe that we are communicating with one another. So can you winkle your left eye? And more than 10 people who were standing there, suddenly they saw that the dead man was winking with the left eye. And then he said, Amen. And said to the people, Now you can put him back again. I will come back tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Now I can see that you need some theological understanding. You have to understand, you talk about the man, 22 years old, young evangelist, who have never, ever raised a dead. And he didn't know how you are supposed to do it. So he decided, let's do it according to Jesus. He was raised from the dead on the third day. So he was not in any hurry in this whole thing. So next morning, he came back to the hospital and now the entire stairway all the way to the main door was packed of people because everybody have heard that the dead man, because the doctors have come to the morgue to check, is the guy really dead? Because the dead, does not, they don't winkle there with their eyes. <laughs> but it was once again completely exempt and it was decided this man is stone dead. And brother gave there and again... The same worship, same prayer. And then towards the end of his prayer, he said, Party Secretary John, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I call you back to life now. Amen. And what happened? Nothing. After he said, Amen, he just left the morgue, walked up to the uh, ground floor and when the doors of the hospital were closing behind his back the spirit of God hit the dead man in the morgue and he stood up sitting and he vomited a cancer of size of a football and the first word he said this Jesus is alive amen In the past years, as we've been in China, every year our faith is stretched because of the testimonies that are coming. If this would happen in the West, it would be a major enterprise. All the Christians, they would fly to go and witness and see. I want to see what God is able to do. But you know, the difference is that in the China, the miracles, they follow those who believe. They come after them. We are not running after miracles. And God has a purpose when he gives the miracles because the eyes of thousands and thousands of people are opened as they see the power of kingdom of God. And this is the beauty of the Great Commission. This is the beauty of the back to Jerusalem. Can you imagine what is going to happen in the house of Muhammad when suddenly people are experiencing the mighty power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Can you see that happen? And can you see that happen, what happened in the house of Hindu with these millions of gods? And suddenly Jesus Christ and his power will appear and everybody will see there is Jesus Christ is the Lord. In China we believe firmly that Buddha is not the Lord. We believe that Hindu is not the Lord. And Muhammad absolutely is not the Lord. 
Because there's only one Lord, and His name is Jesus Christ. And He's calling you and I to submit our lives to serve His plan. By the way, God never serves your own plans. So forget about it. It's a waste of time. But just trying to find out, God, what is your perfect plan for my life? Help me to stay in the middle of that blueprint and move according to your speed and your anointing and to see the wonderful power of kingdom of God.